Hi, my name is Dewi Fortuna Anwar. I'm a research professor at the Centre for Political Studies, the Indonesian Institute of Sciences based in Jakarta. Well, ASEAN is expanding very fast, uh, in, uh, particularly you know, in this new economy, the digital economy. Uh, Singapore, as the current chair of ASEAN, is in fact focusing on expanding the uh, ASEAN uh, cooperation in ASEAN digital economy. But we also know that ASEAN is very big and very diverse. Uh, they are economically, ASEAN is divided into three different types of countries: the, the very developed ASEAN members like Singapore, the you know the developed ones but still lagging behind like. Malaysia is already ahead, but Indonesia and the Philippines, Thailand. But there are also the CMLV countries in the Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar and Vietnam, uh, which are in the third uh, level. So the idea of developing a digital economy uh, should try to reduce the development gap between the three different types of uh, economic groupings. And, uh, and here, uh, South Korea can play a role uh, both in trying uh, to assist in developing the digital platform because uh, after all South Korea is very advanced in its ICT uh, industries and secondly in the content you know we may have the platform but what ac actually are we going to do with it and, and South Korea uh, I, uh, as you know is very innovative uh, and it is very advanced in, in, in its uh, creative economy so there are many many ways in which South Korea can assist different uh, countries, particularly the less developed members of ASEAN. Oh, yeah, I really welcome uh, the new uh, southern policy you know, from, from South Korea, which tries to broaden uh, the thrust of Korean engagement with uh, Southeast Asia, with ASEAN beyond the economic uh, domain. Uh, South Korea's engagement with Southeast Asia has, has been ongoing uh, since you know, Korea became a dialogue partner of ASEAN and also with individual uh, ASEAN member states. You know, Korea is one of the largest investors, for example, in Indonesia. Uh, the manufacturing industries in, in, South, uh, uh, in Indonesia uh, benefits very much from uh, South Korean investment. South Korea has also been very active in uh, promoting its um, industrial products. Samsung is very popular. Uh, and LG, you know, and all the uh, products from South Korea, uh, Hyundai and, 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 and so on are, are household names. Uh, and also pop culture uh, from South Korea. But there have been a lot of criticisms about uh, South Korean engagement nonetheless. Uh, from my own ex country, for example, from Indonesia, there have been a lot of problems, for example, with uh, South Korean uh, manufacturing uh, investment. There have been a lot of labor disputes and, and, and poor communication between Korean businesses with the local uh, communities as well as the, their, their, their local labor. So it is very important that South, Korean, that South Korea is not simply seen as an economic animal, you know, that uh, it is culturally sensitive, uh, that it is able to engage in various other sectors. Therefore, the, the new, new Southern policy uh, which aims to be much more broad-based, covering all three pillars of ASEAN cooperation, political, security, economic, social, cultural. Uh, I think it's, it's a very timely and very relevant. The most important thing is the follow-through, of course, and to make sure that the different pillar doesn't uh, develop in isolation from the other pillars, because as I said, you know, economic uh, activities should be backed also by greater social and cultural understanding uh, of the local cultures. Uh, and there should be more two-way engagements. Uh, so it's not just Korea exporting one way, uh, it's, it's pop culture, but it should also be much more open to uh, uh, you know, uh, inputs from, from different countries in Southeast Asia. And more we would like to encourage also more intellectual exchanges you know, the, the, the by, uh, both, uh, from both sides. I think we have to live with the fact that the United States and China are the two most powerful countries in the world now, and particularly in our part of the world, these are the two most relevant powers. And the state relations between Washington and Beijing will affect the lives of our entire region. Uh, we are, of course, very concerned that the current US-China rivalry uh, could escalate into a more serious tension, you know, especially the trade war between Washington and Beijing uh, uh, is having a very de negative impact on our whole regional economy. And also, if there is a spillover of tension into other areas, 
uh, it would force uh, our region, ASEAN countries and South Korea also, uh, to have to choose between the two, which we do not want. Uh, I think ASEAN and South Korea are in the same position. We would like to benefit from both countries. We like to have good relations with both Washington and Beijing for on, on their own merits, you know, regardless of the state of relations between the two countries. Uh, we believe that China is important and we need to uh, have good relations with China. We like to be able to, to benefit from everything that China has to offer, including the BRI uh, initiatives. And the same uh, uh, goes with the US. The US remains a very important security partner as well as a very important market uh, for our exports. Uh, so we do not want you know, to see a confrontation between these two countries. So uh, ASEAN and South Korea uh, should continue to be actively engaged with these two superpowers uh, and to try to convince both of them uh, of the importance of uh, having you know, a steady and a more predictable relationships. Uh, for the US uh, current uh, strategy of uh, free and open Indo-Pacific, in principle, I think ASEAN countries support policy that is based on international law, that uh, a free and open Indo-Pacific uh, should adhere to international law, particularly uh, United, uh, United Nations Convention on Law of the Seas 1982. It should respect every aspect of UNCLOS. The US is not a signatory of UNCLOS, but I think it, it has respected uh, UNCLOS 1982, and, and we would continue, you know, uh, to expect that the US to continue to support uh, international law. And we also expect China, which is a party to UNCLOS 1982, to respect UNCLOS 1982 in all its entirety, not to be selective in it. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, our hope is that the region remains peaceful, because a peaceful region ensures our continued uh, prosperity. Well, ASEAN is there before all the other countries uh, have played a role in trying to draw North Korea into various regional dialogues. Don't forget that the ASEAN Regional Forum, which was established in 1994, is the only regional mechanism in which North Korea is a full member. So, so ASEAN has always been very open uh, to engaging with North Korea, and I think that uh, we should push for more of this. So uh, the ASEAN Regional Forum uh, should be revitalized and, and, and North Korean participation uh, should be encouraged further. Uh, I would also argue that uh, South North Korea should be invited to participate in all the three pillars of the uh, ASEAN cooperation. The political and security pillar beside the ASEAN Regional Forum, maybe the defense officials from North Korea should be invited to participate in the ASEAN Defense Minister's uh, meeting, yeah, plus meeting. Uh, so that they can talk directly to their counterparts from ASEAN countries and, 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 and the dialogue partners countries. Maybe North Korea could also be invited to become a, a sectoral dialogue partner of ASEAN so that they can participate in uh, uh, various economic activities in which they feel comfortable with. They should also be encouraged to take part in uh, social cultural uh, activities. The important thing is that the ASEAN can pro uh, provide uh, the forum ASEAN can uh, uh, be active in promoting confidence building measures uh, and to build trust uh, in North Korea that they can live in peace with their neighboring countries, that they could engage in productive cooperation with neighboring countries so that they feel secure and, and therefore there is no need for them to own nuclear weapons or other uh, weapon of mass destruction uh, because in fact instead of promoting their own security, possession of WMD actually increases insecurity because it creates distrust, it creates fear in the neighboring uh, countries. Uh, uh, they should look at how ASEAN has managed its security. Southeast Asia has declared itself to be a, web, uh, a Southeast Asia nuclear weapon free zones. Many Southeast Asian countries had conflicts with each other. Uh, remember, remember, you know, the Vietnam, uh, uh, which is a communist, you know, uh, did not get on well with the, uh, the non-communist ASEAN countries. Uh, Indonesia and Malaysia used to have confrontation with each other, but now we are living in peace with each other through promoting uh, real substantive cooperation in, you know, in different, different areas. And there is no need, uh, and ASEAN countries do not feel the need to have 
possessions of weapons uh, uh, that that is beyond you know beyond reasonable needs. Of course, you know each, each country has military establishments, but we do not see uh, the development of arms race uh, within within uh, Southeast Asia, which is really threatening to each other. And certainly, uh, we do not believe that possessions of nuclear weapons would enhance our security. Therefore, in fact, we believe that no country should have nuclear weapons. That is why uh, Southeast Asia has developed uh, nuclear weapon-free zones. And uh, we can encourage uh, North Korea to look also at how ASEAN has managed relations between the very diverse members. We have Laos and Vietnam, which are former adversaries of the non-communist countries, and uh, the two, com two communist countries are now full members of ASEAN and active participants of the ASEAN economic community. They have remained politically as a communist-dominated uh, single-party uh, regimes, but their economies is open, and, and, and they have you know, benefited uh, from engagement with ASEAN. So ASEAN can help uh, to reassure North Korea that uh, it could develop into a normal country. Well, I, I'm a strong believer that talks, talks, talks are, you know, uh, are better uh, than, than not to have dialogues. Uh, the Jeju Forum and forums like Jeju, uh, first it provides a comfortable meeting point for different stakeholders to exchange different views. Uh, so friends, of course, can exchange views all the time, but even more importantly, those who do not share our views can also express themselves and we can all listen to them. Uh, this, this is part of CBM, Confident Building Measures. Secondly, uh, forums like Jeju Forum uh, can assist official policy makers in finding alternative solutions because here people can talk in their private capacities also. So we can think about innovative ways of promoting peace and security, uh, which may not always be possible within bureaucratic official settings where officials are bound you know, by, by, by their position. So thinking out of the box is very important. And, and uh, thirdly, uh, I would argue that increasingly international peace and security and prosperity uh, are linked also with issues like environment, gender, uh, you know, the food security, energy security and, and so on. So a lot of non-traditional securities are becoming mainstream. Mm -hmm. So clearly, you know, uh, we, we need to be, and, and the digital economy, cyber security, uh, you know, these are some of the new uh, issues that we need to, be, to address. So forums like JG Forum would be the way that we can uh, start to discuss all the new challenges. Uh, and, uh, and as I say, you know, uh, having um, a comfortable uh, place where everybody feels welcome. Think tanks play a very important role because they continue to think Hopefully they don't have tanks, <laughs> yeah. So they, they continue to think, uh, to do research, which governments don't have time to do. So uh, they, so you know, you have all of this pool of expertise within think tanks, uh, and and their and their outputs are more policy oriented. This is the difference between think tanks and say research centers at universities or or more conventional research institutions. That think tanks uh, always. Uh, try to be more relevant uh, to policy makers. Mm -hmm. So the um, think tank communities uh, plays a very important role uh, in the track two process and track and one process. Mm -hmm. uh, they should be the, the, you know, the go-to place for policy makers uh, from all sectors you know, uh, of, of life. Uh, if we need solutions, uh, we, we should be able to draw on the expertise from think tanks. Well, uh, firstly, I think the uh, Jeju, Jeju Island, which is very beautiful. It has a very uh, pleasant climate, uh, and uh, Jeju itself is a special place in South Korea. It is a very open place. You don't need visa to come here, uh, and uh, you know it is very international. Uh, is making a, a very very important contribution uh, to our regional. Uh, peace and, and security and prosperity by having the Jeju Peace Institute here and by convening this annual uh, Jeju uh, Forum for Peace and Prosperity as well as the various activities 
that the Jeju Peace Institute uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, organizes throughout the year. Uh, so I hope that both the Jeju people who support the, the activities of the Jeju Peace Institute uh, will continue to prosper and, and will continue to contribute to uh, uh, our, you know, our dynamic region.